welcome to the MBS show, episode number 259. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Wills. Hello, Norman. How are you today? Fine, thank you. You seem to be happy. Oh, we got a new season of MLP. And, um, okay, we got a new season of MLP. That's all I got. That's all I'm excited to be about. My life is extremely simple. That's kind of sad. I wouldn't say that. I mean, your life is exciting in other ways, I think. No, no, it's not, Norman. It's it's really boring and dull. This is the only bit of solace I have in my life. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sure there's more to it, but okay. Uh, new new seasons out, new episodes out. So, yay. We're recording this on the day of the new episode, the 15th. So that's... Sorry, um, why is my calendar says here 14? That's not right. Yeah, 15. Um, yes, on the 15th. So that's awesome. Uh, probably uh, episode review of that one will come out later in the weeks. Probably, uh, I'm not sure. There's a lot of pre-planning that needs to be done. But still, uh, reviews will be out soon enough. So, how do you like the new episode, Will? Oh, well, we're probably going to have to save uh, what our actual thoughts are for it for your Sunday uh, recording mm-hmm, show. Mm-hmm. But, uh, good lordy, uh, did I have fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I will say the things I liked, if we can say one thing. I like that Celestia got more characterization in the first episode. In the second episode, I'm glad we got to see just an understanding that sometimes friendships can be extremely aggravating with some people. <laughs> but you still are good friends with them because when the day comes, it's all just a good point to be miserable together. <laughs> well, that's one way to look at it. Also, we learned that people can hold down multiple jobs and actually be multifaceted characters. True that. And also, I learned that there's a time and a place for singing. (laughs) Oh, yeah. There is always a time and a place for singing. Uh, Doing a time trial is not one of them. (laughs) True that. Uh, But still, but still, um, one of the few things that if you guys are new to the fandom and want to, well... If you want to play catch up, essentially that's, if you want to play catch up, one of the few things you could do is, well, uh, right into news time, ladies and gentlemen, is watch the official Hasbro YouTube for their official season 1 to 6 recap. So, what this is, is a really condensed and compressed way. I, I think it's even in under a minute or so. It's a synopsis, it's a, a bridge version of the whole story. Yeah, there's like a, Goes through one through season one through six. Let's see how exactly detailed did they get it? Well, technically, it's not bad. Uh, the, the season one, they say how it all started, and then uh, season two, they mention uh, how they defeat a Discord and whatnot. Season three it, it's a really short summarization. Um, it's a really good way to catch up for season seven, but the best way is always to watch all of it. Yeah, now I'm kind of wondering if other shows would start doing this. It actually be kind of funny for some of those police procedurals. Now on NCIS, episode 18, uh, season 18, here's the catch up on what happened in the previous 17 seasons. Oh god. Oh. <laughs> what about that show, 24? Here's what happened in the past seven episodes, uh, in the se- past seven seasons of 24. Long story short, this guy's having a horrible week. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, uh, twenty four is all about uh, what happens in that twenty four hours. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So imagine if all seven seasons were back to back. This is the worst week of my life. <laughs> wow. Yeah, but still, <clears throat> uh, I I think My Little Pony is one of those rare cases where somehow this show is popular enough to warrant this. You know what? What happened to Samurai Jack? Like, would didn't doesn't he deserve this kind of treatment? Nah, nah, trust me. Season 5 started off just how it should have for Samurai Jack. Yeah, but it's like, what happened to the past four seasons? They did do a recap. Well, they did mention of, or they did explain how he lost his something. But yeah, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I think. Well, I will say this. I'm going to feel sorry for any kid who watches the first four seasons and goes right to season 5 and there's like a gigantic leap for in content. It's like, yeah, I love Samurai Jack. Blood, guts, <laughs> death, yeah. death, death. Uh, somebody mentioned to me that uh, Samurai Jack, the fifth season of it, is similar to Breath of the Wild. <laughs> in the form of uh, Jack has a new weapon every time he uses it. <laughs> 
It breaks constantly too. <laughs> yeah. Same like ripping the while. Master Sword, what's that? This is a stick. <laughs> uh, but still, uh, this is a good way for uh, uh, people to catch up. And I'm surprised that Hasbro is the one that released it. So yay, good on them. It's good to have a bit more, you know, content for the new people. But for the old people, uh, the old fans, we also get nice little treats as well, like that little send up to Fresh Prince. Yeah, like um, Hasbro did a commercial for uh, what you call this season seven, and it's Pinky singing, and you know how hip Pinky is, right? So Hasbro decided to do the Fresh Princess of Friendship, yo, <laughs> and it's a parody cover of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. So my goodness, this is fun. Uh, it's a good, it's a good parody, uh, cleverly written. But also the thing is, you know, there's going to be a very finite age group that's actually going to get this. Oh, true that. But you know what? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's for us. It's for us who live on the internet for a long while now. Oh yeah, I will say my friend Jen though, uh, she grew up with uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. It was one of her favorite shows. Well, I said Bel Air, Bel Air, <laughs> <laughs> Fresh Prince of Bel Air. And she just couldn't stop laughing when she watched that. <laughs> Why? What happened? When she saw the parody. At first she thought I was sending her something fan-based, but then when it actually turned out to be real, <laughs> and she's like, she, she actually just thought it was even funnier. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you know what? This isn't the first time. Remember uh, when they did Equestria Girls? Oh, yeah, yeah. They did that, too. Yeah, so... That was an old commercial. True, but that one was So, so the question is, what what are they going to parody next? You know what? It could be almost anything. By this time, like, they could have done Gangnam Style. They could have done Chicken Attack. But you know what? It could be yeah, almost... Gangnam Style is a bit too old hat now, buddy. And Fresh Prince is not? No, no, no. That that meme is a bit too dank, all right? We need fresher memes. <laughs> Persona! Yeah, sure. Just, you know it's something. <laughs> bow, bow, bow. Yeah, sure. If you have the ponies a gun, that'll end well. <laughs> oh, no, you don't need to have guns. They could have those uh, sexy menus. You know what? No, no, no. Like, if you're going to talk about that, why not just uh, having our main characters have stands? Oh. Uh, <laughs> JoJo reference. You thought... Yeah, that's a JoJo reference. No, I'm thinking it was... Uh, you thought it was this guy. But no, it's me, Trixie! <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> yes. Uh, you know what? Yeah, I, 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 I won that. <laughs> no, 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 wait, wait. But Trixie isn't talented. No, it ha- the only one who's, who's able to be stop time would have to be, uh, Starlight Glimmer. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was me, Starlight Glimmer. Oh, God. Alright. <clears throat> uh, that, that, that's only a dream I wish they would do. Probably a uh, comics, yeah. probably a comics. No, 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 enough with the JoJo's, enough with the JoJo's. Get back, JoJo, to once where you once belong, that's enough. <laughs> uh, but still, I'm sure cosplayers who are creative enough will probably cross them over. And you know what cosplayers go to? Um, fabric stores? <laughs> that and conventions, my friend. Conventions. Oh, okay. And talking about conventions, uh, Hasbro's releasing their own convention. Oh yeah, Hascon. Yep. <laughs> Uh, great name, great name. And what this is, is a convention for Hasbro products. And they released their first trailer. Um, I'm not sure where they're doing it, but it's on the, whatchamacallit, uh, show notes, go click on it. And the video trailer that they did is not bad. The name is still hanging me up too. All I can think about is just like the Dog memes. Like Hascon, much cosplay, very wild. <laughs> yeah, why not, right? <laughs> but you know what? I, I'm just wondering, like, how are they going to focus this one? Probably just all about their everything Hasbro related. You know, they got another Transformers movie coming up that's involving the Knights of the Round Table. Yeah, yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, this one is directed by Michael Bay again. Yeah, it's always been directed by Michael Bay. So why am I saying like it's not? Yeah, but still. I don't know. And, you know, I've seen the video. They covered from Play-Doh to Monopoly to Transformers to Ponies, Little Pet Shop, and a lot of other Hasbro brands. And you know what? I think that this is a really interesting con. It'll be interesting to see what, how they're focusing it. 
Well, Hasbro has a lot more properties than just MLP and Transformers. True, it's their two more popular ones, but they have more properties, so who knows what will happen. True, they have their board game licenses too, and that's going to be interesting. Did you know Disney tried to buy them? Um, I thought that was a, um, I thought that was a hoax, or was it a hoax, or was it real, but Hasbro said nah? It, it was real, but Hasbro said no. I mean, Disney tries to buy a lot of properties nowadays. You can pretty much say they were trying to be bought by Disney, and you could say, yeah, we, I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. yeah. But I also heard that Apple tried to buy Disney for 200 bill. What would Apple do with it? Well, nothing. Like, they just let it uh, carry on. They just own it. That'll be interesting. Where's Hascon going to be held? I've read, I remember talking about it a while back, but. Now with this news here, eh, let me see, uh, let me see here, maybe let's call Let's event. find out where it's gonna be. Oh, yes. Uh, oof. Why are you giving me this kind of info, Facebook? Hescon, public event. Oh, Rhode Island. Cool. September 8th to September 10th. Huh, not bad. Huh. Rhode Island finally gets a convention. Yay. If I'm not mistaken, um, Hasbro's HQ is at Rhode Island? By the way, uh, are you planning on going if you have the chance? Oh, to Hascon? Yeah. No, nah, I only got one convention I'm going to. That's BronyCon this year. Uh, I've already made my, I've already made my plans to go to one convention this year, and that's it. Ah, uh, all righty then. But still, uh, I do hope that if this con is successful, they do a round two and see how it goes. Interesting. And last on the news is Mich- Mike- Michael. Is that Michael? I believe that'd be Michael or Mikhail. Mikhail. Uh, Gainer. Ga, 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 oof. Gainer? Gene. Gene. Uh, who knows? Alright. Gagne. 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 Probably. Gagne. Uh, returns to pony movies with a bit of behind the scene hype. Hmm. So, long story short, Mikhail here, uh, mentioned that he is stopping working on ponies for a bit to work on the Spider-Man animated movie. And after he was done with that, he's supposed to be working on ponies. And reading on his blog, he mentioned that, well, both companies wanted him, so he's working on both at the same time now. And he is really excited for the pony movie, saying that it's going to be awesome. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, Mikhail here is an animator, right? Or is it an artist? It says here... Just says he's an animator, but let's see what his blog says. Yeah, yeah, and Mikhail here is an animator, it seems, so that's cool. So, yeah, he's working behind the scenes of the, whatchamacallit, this, pony movies. And talking about pony movies, uh, some of the friends of the show went to Thai PonyCon, and they mentioned that they got an exclusive uh, showing of the movie. Oh, well, mostly oh, cool. tips and bits, like the first minute of the movies, a song from the movies, and whatnot. And from what they're describing, uh, the movie is going to be in... Well, uh, Cantalot is going to be in 3D, while the ponies are in 2D. Oh, cool. And that's going to send a bunch of fandom people very happy, because now they'll have uh, 3D models to work with. It's like... A bit trying to think someone's going to try and dissect every scene they see to try and create a an elaborate 3D model of how big Camelot actually is. Probably. And you remember uh, Legend of Everfree? I do remember Legend of Everfree. The pony 3D game thingy? Remember that one? What is it? Legend of Equestria. I forgot. I thought that was the fourth movie. Yep. The eighth QG movie. Uh, I, I'm forgetting. What, what is the fan-made game? I do not know. Uh, well, is that fan-made game where it's, a, it's an MMO... RPG thingy, ah, I forgot, but if you remember, yeah, it's, it's awesome, but just imagine that, but with higher budget and better looking 3D models, so that's going to be awesome. This fall cannot come sooner, because I'm really excited for it. Yeah, <laughs> and a friend of mine who is usually a sourpuss says he is hype. The hype couldn't be much more real. <laughs> a sourpuss, huh? Yep. So yeah. Yeah, but still, pff, uh, I, I wish it shows here. Like, probably if with my luck, it wouldn't. But I do hope it does show here. It'll, it'll be awesome. So, what are you expecting with this one? Much action drama with bang for your buck? 
I guess the best way I could get the most bang for my buck when it comes to the movie is probably going to go see it in a really big theater. But uh, I'm actually kind of wondering what theaters they're going to be sending this to. Because when it came to EQG, uh, the first movie, it wasn't in a lot of theaters. And even then, it was only in for a couple days. So I don't know if this is going to get a large theatrical release and stay there for a while or, or what. Well, that was done by a small production company, if I'm not mistaken. Hasbro did do it, but it was to publish by themselves. And this one, the official big movie, I think New Line is involved somehow. Well, then we can only hope it goes to really cool theaters. If it goes to the AMC that's close to my town, it definitely would go there. AMC. Nice, large seats. The AMC Amazing. is America Movie Cinema? I'm not sure what it stands for. When it comes to really good theater experience, I'd say AMC, for me at least, is really great. Don't buy any other concessions, though. It's extremely <laughs> expensive. Yeah. And how much is a ticket, by the way? It depends what you get. If you get uh, the uh, at most expensive, 15. Cheapest, 8. It depends when and what, whether it's 3D or not. Uh, and they gouge you on the concession, like popcorn, Coke, and whatnot. A small tub of popcorn is $6. Uh, and let me guess, is, is there any combos for it? Oh, yeah, yeah. They've got everything from pretzels, hot dogs. they got a very large concessions <clears throat> station. Huh. It's very elaborate, but there's no way. I, I, I That is just crazy. <laughs> yeah. But honestly, I, talk, talking about pop, uh, movie food and whatnot, right? Uh, over here locally for me, a movie ticket, I usually buy I buy two tickets just because I want to watch it with a friend. So that would cost me about 20 bucks. And then when going purchasing food like popcorns and a drink, uh, a large popcorn and two drinks would cost me about 10. So it's like, hmm, it's worth it, it's worth it. And that is considered the cheapest one at one of the malls or one of the theaters. If I were to go to another theater, they gouge on concessions really bad. So it's like, yeah, uh, just just because I want to, just because I want to. Screw me. <laughs> but still, uh, movies are w- worth it if you really want to watch it. And I'm probably guessing if you guys heard uh, the Alamo movie theater, that's a really good one too. Hopefully you can see it with some people, man. I'm hoping it comes to your area, and if not... On to the next topic. What has been entertaining us this week? So, Wills, uh, what has been entertaining you, man? What has been entertaining me? I've decided to go extremely old school. For those of you who have not heard of the program, all right, so many of you heard of Steam, mm-hmm. which is a games retailer for uh, for digital. There's another games retailer called GOG, goodoldgames.com. Ah, oh, man, I'm shilling hard right now, but I don't give a crap. Anyway, there's a lot of good games from the 70s and 80s and 90s. And the thing is, is that, especially the 80s and 90s one, I have some that are very near and dear to me. But the problem is, well, good luck playing in any of them today. Not only is it almost impossible to find anything that actually would run run on any of your modern computers, but also there's just the fact that, you know, finding the games themselves is practically a... <laughs> it's a dig. But what GOG has been doing, GoGames.com, they've been helping um, emulate and, well, they either buy the licensee, licenses for these games or they get the update, the people who currently hold the licenses to help update a newer version of the game to sell it. So great games like uh, Fallout 1 and 2, the, uh, the Baldur's Gate series. Um, heck, they just released Planescape Torment, an enhanced edition, which not only improved the visual uh, viewing distance and also... The graphics were cleaned up, but also the audio was massively overhauled as well. And um, because it was such a great game, they didn't have to do anything to the game itself except make it be able to run on your modern machines. Yeah, how, how do they now? What I can oh, um, combination of using uh, the most common program you'll see is them using DOSBox. Yeah, that's what I was thinking because most of these games were run on a really old machine, like before. Windows, like, uh, for you guys who are listening to this now, uh, back in the days, before Windows 95, uh, games were run on things called DOS. And some of those games are really jank in terms of how they're run or how they're supposed to be run. And certain things like, uh, whatchamacallit, clock speed and whatnot does, does affect the game. Like, 
modern day now with our high clock speed will affect the game like crazy. For example, some games like the original King's Quest, if you tried playing it on your modern machine, <laughs> you'd be unable to play it because the game would be running at such a high speed. You press <laughs> the left button on your D-pad and suddenly, boom, your character's dead. Why? Oh, because you walked off a cliff. Well, I didn't walk off a cliff. No, you did. Uh, six screens over. Your character just kept moving. <laughs> But it was half a second. Yeah, your computer's running really fast. <laughs> so a lot of games were tied into the clock speed of how fast the computer ran, which made the game go at an average pace. Uh, but nowadays, uh, there isn't a lot of stuff programmed like that. But that's what they've uh, done, is have games like that. Um, recently, the, what's been entertaining me, though, from GOG, is uh, Elder Scrolls Two Daggerfall. Mm. Uh, now, I do have uh, Arena, the first one. But I've heard a lot better things about Daggerfall. And uh, to be honest, I'm seeing what they're talking about. It's um, it's actually kind of made me realize how hard the Elder Scrolls series has fallen. Like, I know there's a lot of people who are fans of it, and that's great. But I'm also at the same time, man, you people are really being cheated. Because if the Elder Scrolls series had actually continued, like, okay, Morrowind was a very good... I, I've yet to play that, but I've heard it's a very good step up. But... Gosh, is there a gigantic difference in what you can do gameplay-wise between Daggerfall and Skyrim. Now, Skyrim looks very pretty, but there is very little RPGing in the realm of RP uh, of this RPG. It's mostly an action game with RPG elements. But Daggerfall? No, it's it's hard on the RPG. There is a stat for everything you do, for running, for jumping, for climbing, for swimming. Heck, with the climbing, on some dungeons, you can actually uh, just bypass entire puzzles if your climbing stat is good enough. If your swimming stat sucks, man, you move faster, uh, basically, with your knees caps destroyed than you would through water. But isn't that almost the same thing as most of the Elder Scrolls games? Like, if you use the bow a lot, you'll be proficient at the bow. If you walk a lot, you'll be proficient at walking. Climb a lot, proficient at climbing and stuff. No, because there's no, there's none, there's not a lot of that later stuff. Okay, let's put it in a simpler way. The magic system as well is also much more simplified. Instead of it being action-oriented like the games are now, it's like, okay, you're a wizard, you have so many spell points. You want to actually get your spell points back, you're going to have to rest which means it becomes a management of, oh, well, I'm out of spell points. I can't rest right now because I'm being attacked by somebody. I guess I'm going to have to switch to another weapon and fight. It's all about managing what sort of spells you use and what sort of weapons you use and how you face off against enemies. So, okay, by the way, um, I'm a bit lost on how Elder Scrolls 2 look like. So what's the game like? Is it um, top-down perspective, uh, okay. first person? This, it, it has always been first person for the Elder Scrolls series, but they are the graphics for it are ex- extremely old school. We're talking simple polygonal shapes for dungeons and whatnot. But what's cool is that Arena was extremely flat and just like grid based dungeons, where Daggerfall did was it went 3D with its dungeons, which you'll actually uh, you'll be stuck in first person though. But uh, the dungeons themselves are huge, like. I played a dungeon just a little bit ago uh, before we started doing this call thing, and I've been working on that one for three hours. You will actually get lost in these things, which is good by using the map because you're going to want to use the map to figure where the heck the exit is. Or if you're a wizard, just if you're a wizard, just know the recall spell and be like, whoop, whoop, I'm out. And this is 3D Doom, or...? Yeah, yeah. I'd actually say uh, the graphics are kind of just like Doom, a little bit simpler than Doom, but along the same lines. Ah, alrighty then. So it's almost to Doom's kind of point of view where you can only yes. move forward, back, left, right, and then you don't look up. Oh, you can look up. Oh, really? No. You actually can look up. But um, you, you you still attack and move on a 2D plane. Unless you climb, then you can move straight up walls, or you have levitate the spell, then you can levitate up and down. Half-Life graphics? Uh, no, no. Even much older. less than Half-Life oh. graphics. Or, you know, I, I could... Uh, you, you can just look it up on YouTube. Yeah. There'll be plenty of people that don't have recordings of it. But what's great about it, though, is it's a world. A fully-fledged, gigantic world. Like, a lot of it is randomly generated, but each town or city you come into actually feels like the size of a town or city. That's actually probably my biggest gripe with, uh, you know, Oblivion and especially Skyrim. It's like, there, that is the city, the capital of all of Skyrim. Solitude. You 
I mean that small little village that's got a that's not a village, that's a city. No, no, like there's a couple shops in here and like four houses and a very fancy mansion. This is your capital? Yes, it is. I mean, it's grandiose. It's like, no, 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 no. Cities in Daggerfall, there are at least, okay, in the capital of Daggerfall itself, not only is there a gigantic wall around the entire city, okay, yeah, check, but there are at least 120 buildings in the city alone. Multiple different shops. So, some, Many would say, well, that doesn't sound like, you know, you need to go to all of them. No, just each one, you know, slightly differs on, like, how much they might sell to you or just positions it. And there's just a bunch of houses there that are just houses, which is great if you're a thief because it could be better than, well, I stole everything in this city. It's like, good luck doing that. That may take you a couple days. There's multiple guilds and multiple um, churches for different types. You could join a, a sect of Kinnereth and be a knight of Kinnereth, or maybe you'll just uh, go out and do some thievery by yourself, and maybe the thieves guild will finally pick you up. Who knows? This is, and then okay, you, you found the major city. Well, that's just one city on one province of one section of this gigantic world. You can just explore everything to your heart's content, and every mission you get is a time-based mission, which uh, accentuates the uh, um, the pressure of only taking out so many quests you can. Oh, really? A lot of quests are randomly generated, but it's like, uh, yes, well, my my dearly beloved was kidnapped by the Thieves Guild. I have this gem to you know deliver to them for ransom and whatnot, but if you could actually save her without the ransom, I'd be forever in your debt. Which, which, uh, you could just pay the ransom and deliver back his beloved and you'll get positive reputation with the guy who's like, well, you got her back safely. Thank you. Uh, it's, I'm going to be hard pressed for a while, but at least I have the one I love. And the thieves going to be like, yeah, oh, thanks. You know, you helped us with this, uh, paying out the ransom. We appreciate it. Or it can be like, heck no, I'm not going to give you no diamond or jewelry. And they'll be like, oh, you'll regret that. And then you have to, you have like a time limit of finding where his uh, beloved is, it'll say, it's like, you get a note from one of the guys who attacked you. It's like, oh, they're in so-and-so ruins. Okay, I can go check that out. And dungeons are huge. Like, you will get lost in these things. And so it's like, oh, have I found everything I need to? Where is the person I'm looking for? And you got to go look through the map and see if there's any spot you missed. It's like, oh, I haven't explored this area yet. And that sounds huge. Whew, wow. And this is just. And that's just one. That's just one mission. Oof. Well, I'm guessing that's going to be kept, you know, keeping you busy till <laughs> the next thing. Then. <laughs> oh, probably. I mean, I'm just. I I just like playing it because I mean I love old school games. Ah, all right, all right. If you like good old RPGs? I can definitely recommend it. It's on sale. Actually, currently, it's. Uh, I believe it's still for free at goodoldgames.com. If you purchase any game from GoldGames.com with a new account, you can actually get both Daggerfall and Arena completely for free. Ooh, that is cool. I don't know how long they're having this deal last. It might actually not last for another week or two. I don't know. But if it does, there's a thing. You guys can get some classic games to try out and have some fun with. And, of, and of course, um, because it's really old school, I mean, there's a, there's no wrong way to play it, except there is. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty then. Well, as for me, what has been eating up my week besides, well, um, usually it's the Overwatch and the paydays. Um, recently Overwatch had an update, uh, with the insurgents kind of thing where it's, uh, human versus bots. And that was fun. That was a fun game to do. And I do hope that they keep it around because that is fun. And payday as per usual with the whole, uh, game um recently they did an update where it's much more fun to do crimes so yeah payday you shoot and stuff like there's nothing new there but in terms of um watching entertainment um i've been watching a playthrough of sonic boom rise of the lyric which is <laughs> rather interesting uh, are we talking the game or the cartoon here man? the game the game oh ouch. i i my, my sympathies. Oh, I'm, I'm just watching. I'm not playing. Um, and this was played by Liam from, uh, the super best friend. He has his own channel called Rising Super Stream. And he finished a video in 
three videos, uh, a total of seven hours in total. Huh. Did he use any of the glitches that were in it before? Uh, no, he did the patch. Uh, he did the one point. 10 patch was it or oh, the 1.0 whatever it is but the game's patch so no more uh jump over thing glitch so yeah but uh, sonic boom has a lot of problems but it was interesting to see the game being played legit had good ideas but pure poor execution well of course the game was played because uh not only did they I mean, they were working on Unreal 3, all right? If that was, like, on Xbox or PS4, it would have been just fine. But then um, Sega basically said, yeah, put this on the Wii U. It's like, now they, and then they had to panic. Yeah, well, it was kind of a surprise for them, too. Uh, the company Big Red Button, they did the whole, oh, we're doing this game, and it was going to be on the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation, sorry, uh, PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. We got this all pan out. We're going to use the Unreal Engine. And suddenly Sega said that, oh, we have a deal with Nintendo to push three games for them. That was Sonic Boom, Sonic Lost World, and Sonic and Mario the Olympics. Whatever year was that. Yeah, whatever. So that was the three game deal that they had, and yeah, um, putting a untested engine onto a Wii U. Yeah, good luck, and a lot of things went wrong, and especially with the rush time that they had behind this game. Yeah, it didn't turn out well. Here's hoping that Sega being stupid. Eh, yeah, probably. But here's hoping that the new Sonic game that's called Sonic. Uh, Mania, something like that, I think. No, no, Sonic Mania is the mm-hmm. 2D one. It's the 3D one, I, f- I forgot. But yeah, I hope that game works well. Hell of potential. Yeah, so that's been entertaining my week. But anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com, And you can also reach us on the Twitters. <laughs> the show's Twitter account is at Show, And as for me, I'm at Norman Sanzo. Wills, where can the good people find you? If you want to find my writings, you can find me at Film Fiction. If you want to find my art, you can find me on DeviantArt. And if you want to find anything that I'm saying, you can find me on Twitter, all at W-I-L-I-Z-I-N or W-I-L underscore I underscore Z-I-N. Awesome, awesome. And please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. Also, we have the MBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast, um, available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, you'll get me, Silver Quill, Sapphire Harsong, and probably a guest talking about the Pony episode, the Pony comics, the Pony movies, or anything in general. I must join you guys for this first season episode. I must. That won't be out till a while, man. Like, Silver is at a convention right now. Um, the, the next recording... But we will go to Babscon ourselves and drag him out. <laughs> Well, there's one way to do it, yes. Um, yeah, I, I don't see nothing wrong with that. <laughs> uh, so, that won't be till a while. But yeah, uh, there's something we'll have to do. There's something we have to do. And if you'd like to support us, you can do so at www.patreon.com slash the MBS show. You can support us with a dollar. That entitles you for almost everything on the Patreon. Deleted episodes, updates, or whatever I think i should post up which technically i really should do more of those and early access to special patreon sponsored videos and talking about patreon sponsored videos for five bucks you can suggest a theme or a discussion topic for us to do recently we did the whole main six character arc i have the ended to have more whatever it is and yeah there's something cool for us to discuss something new really and well who knows in the future we have something more interesting things other than ponies who knows right so anyway um oh that's five bucks and it's all available on the patreon so anyway uh i have been norman sanzo i have been will eisen and we will guys catch you next week with another fun show of the mbs show see ya see ya